Welcome to the channel. Today was the seventh round of the chess Olympiad, and uh, today in this video we are going to cover the game between Grandmaster So Wesley from USA and Grandmaster Melkumyan Ranth from Armenia. So So Wesley is playing from white side. I am going to go quite slowly, and a detailed explanation will be provided. Let's start. White plays the move e4. And black plays the move c6. This is known as Karokan defense. Knight c3, d5, and knight f3. White went for the two knights variation of the Karokan. Black played the move bishop g4, h3, bishop into f3, queen into f3, e6. So this is everything theory. White played the move bishop e2. Now black played his bishop on c5. So black is not allowing white to play directly d4. And I think uh, this line is recommended by So Wesley himself in his lifetime repertoire for chessable. So he played castle. Black played the move knight d7. After knight d7, white takes on the d5. And black can capture with the both the pawns, so there is not a problem with any one capture. So like c into d5 is also possible. This happened in the game. And now how to continue with white? You can pause the video and try to find a continuation for white. Now at this position it is very important to get the move d4 on the board. Otherwise the bishop on c5 will be very strong on the diagonal. So directly d4 is not possible as it is a free pawn that's why so prepares it with the move rook d1. So this is a very nice move and now d4 is on the way. In the game black played the move knight g f6. A very natural looking move and black is preparing castle. But instead of that black could have played the move d4. So black is not allowing white to play d4 and he is putting his own pawn on d4. So how to continue with this? Again you can pause the video. This is very instructive game and we are going to learn lot of things here. So just moving the knight away uh, is not helping white and the correct move is to play the move b4 attacking the bishop and if bishop takes this is going to activate our rook with the move rook b1 and after let's say a5 and knight b5 we can see just for the one pawn white pieces are very active we are going to get the d4 pawn eventually b7 is unsupported and black's king is still in the center. So this is a huge advantage for white. If black doesn't take on b4 and play some moves like d into c3, then we can first capture the bishop, knight into c5, and bishop b5 check, a very important move. So this will force the opponent's knight to go back and then we can take on c3 and the knight on d7 is hanging. Again, this is a huge advantage for white. So this b4 move is difficult to find. In the game black played the move knight gf6 and white continued with the move d4. So his aim was successful. Black went back with the move bishop e7. Now white simply improved his bishop on d3. Black castled and white played bishop f4. Everything normal and standard chess. Now black also played this fantastic move knight b8. Now on d7 the knight is not able to do much here. So black wants to reroute this knight and play the move knight b8. So its plan is to go to the c6 square. Now taking into account black's idea how white should respond to it. You can pause the video here and try and find a way for white to continue the game. White played a very nice move again. He played the move knight e2. And the idea is to meet knight c6 with the move c3 d4 pawn is supported and knight b4 ideas are prevented. So black played knight c6 and white continued with the move c3. Black played the move rook e8. Again a natural move and white continued with the move rook e1. Now rook's job on the d file is over and uh, we are moving the rook on the e file which is a semi open file. Black here continued with the move g6 and this is the move I don't get. Maybe the idea is to uh, finger to the bishop on g7. 
this could be the sole idea otherwise it it looks like it is weakening the dark squares the simplest move would be just to play bishop d6 and black is quite solid here okay after g6 now white played the move knight g3 now what could be the idea of this knight g3 move again it is based on the opponent's latest move g6 and white want to play the move h4 h5 so that's why knight g3 will help the pawn to get to the h5 square now knowing this idea of uh, of h4 black tries to prevent it and he plays the move knight d7 so now h4 is met with the move bishop into h4 the another idea of knight d7 is also is related with the move e5 now in the game white played the move rook e3 now i think white missed black's reply instead of that rook d1 uh, was the better move because rook d1 simply prevents e5 as after e5 we can take it we are a pawn up but in the game after rook e3 this move allows black to play the move e5 so this is a very important break for black his pieces will be unleashed here now how e5 is possible it still it still looks like uh, we are getting that pawn but after d into e5 there comes the move bishop c5 and our rook is attacked and now e5 pawn is under attack uh, by three pieces right so black will get the e5 pawn back with interest so in the game white has to play the move bishop h6 now black plays the move e4 this happened in the game there was other alternative to play which was to play bishop f8 and try to exchange the dark square bishop it is a general principle we try to exchange opponents attacking pieces or active pieces so bishop into f8 and now e4 now queen is under attack so queen has to move back and rook into f8 and now we move the bishop and after the move f5 uh, it looks like black is better here so bishop f8 was the right move so now in the game e4 uh, happened how white will continue take a moment pause the clock and find the full variation how to continue for white and the opponent uh, melkomian rant was struck by the move rook into e4 and what happens after the move d into e4 in the game black played the move knight f8 so it is clear that d into e4 is not working why find it here comes a beautiful sacrifice queen sacrifice queen into f7 check king into f7 bishop c4 check king f6 only move knight into e4 check king f5 only move g4 check king into e4 only move rook e1 check king f3 and bishop d5 it's so pretty a very beautiful line missed by opponent and that's why black didn't take on e4 and he has to go with the move knight f8 and black is simply pawn down and white easily converted this he played rook f4 now f7 is a weakness and it's difficult to uh, defend it so black has to play the move f5 and there comes a sacrifice knight into f5 pawn into f5 rook into f5 black's king is totally open black plays the move queen d6 trying to attack the bishop and bringing his queen to the defense of his king now there comes the move queen g4 check only move to block the check is the knight g6 and now white can play the move rook into d5 a very nice move because queen into d5 will be met with the move bishop into g6 a complete destroying of black's king so black has to play the move queen f6 and there comes the move g3 this is a very good move a very good technical chess opponent was trying to play queen h4 and extend some pieces so directly rook f5 is not possible that's why first g3 and rook f5 is being prepared black played the move bishop f8 but it is too late rook f5 queen e7 and bishop c4 check king h8 bishop g5 and here black resign to continue with i can show you the variation if black plays queen d6 we are going to keep attacking that queen 
until we get a favorable checks now bishop f6 is a dangerous threat and white is just lost so it was a fantastic game by super grandmaster so wesley from usa i hope you like my explanation thanks for watching the video